Hi, Joel. Hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, we have a new release, as usual. Uh, what's what's the number this time? This time it is one twenty. One two zero. Yes. And as usual, I have a presentation for you to tell everything about the new stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, but before we go into the new stuff, uh, usual tip of the day. And today's tip of the day is to always, always pin your Docker image. And uh, just a quick uh, uh, context. Every time we release a Playwright version, we release a matching version of a Docker image. Mm -hmm. And this Docker image actually includes all the necessary browsers and the native dependencies that uh, you need to run Playwright inside. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you don't pin your Docker image, you might run something in a very weird environment and it might break for you. So please do pin them. Mm -hmm. Okay. New stuff. Uh, we have uh, some agenda and let's jump right in to screenshots improvements. Ooh. Okay. And I have a story. Uh, say, for example, I have this website and um, I can go and click on this uh, hamburger and it will like slide in mm -hmm. sidebar, like a usual website. Mm -hmm. And say, for example, I want to take screenshot of this uh, state of the page. Okay. And, you know, do visual regression testing. So how would I do it? Let's try to test. It's really short. I'd, I'd use the page.screenshot. Exactly. But first you need to navigate to the website. Okay. Then you click the hamburger. Oh, button. okay. <laughs> it looks like you clicked <laughs> the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's called hot dog, but whatever. Same okay. thing. Yes. And uh, then you take a screenshot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And last thing, you match it against, against some expectation. Now, okay. yeah. if I run this mm -hmm. three times, mm -hmm. I might end up with three different images. Yeah, because you might get different ads. Uh, no, you're very smart. But first, oh. I will get animation, right? Sidebar has animation. Oh, okay. Yes, there's a... Yes, okay. Okay, so every time I click on this hot dog, yeah. then I get the CSS animation that's running. Yeah. So my images are not the same, so my test actually fails. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Uh, now, now there is a way. Now okay. there is a first feature I want to present, which is called uh, disabling CSS animations. So does this disable them? I, I assume this disables them in my tests, but I really want to disable them on other people's websites because I don't like CSS animations. Uh, uh, I can feel you, but this yeah. actually only disables them for the screenshot. Oh, so it's very fancy. very clever. Yeah, and this feature actually works across all our languages. Mm -hmm. And to use it, you just, when you do a screenshot, mm -hmm. you add this option, animations disabled. So, they, this is gonna, it, so animations, like, it's as if they take one frame, right? They're just going to go immediately to the end state? Yeah, it fast or, forwards it to the end, okay. yes. So my sidebar will be all in the same position now. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. But uh, as you noticed, this is still not going to work, right? Because I have my ads. Yes, yes, I was, my, I was ahead of you. And my ads are all different. Yeah. So uh, what do I do? And uh, well, it turns out there is uh, another feature that I want to present, which is called element masking. Mm. And this feature is also available across all the languages. Mm -hmm. And to use it, similarly to animations, you pass in a mask with a locator. And this locator, it will actually go and paint these overlays over the all matching elements. OK, I have questions. First, sure. what color does, does it paint? FF00FF. It's a pink color. OK, so it's not customizable. You always get you always get not this customizable pink, for now. Uh, purple color. Yeah, but it's uh, very easily distinguishable on every website. Yes, no, that, that's, the, that's the, the standard testing color, right? Yes, um, exactly. And uh, so it looks here like, so this locator can point to more than one element. Yes. Yes. Okay. Can I pass more than one locator in here? Um, if I recall, yes. Yeah, it's, I think so. Okay. You, pass, you, you don't know how to do that. <laughs> it's a, you actually pass in the rail locators. I think it's a bug. Oh, in okay. Because yeah. I might have, you know, my ads and um, my Twitter feed and yes. the weather and the clock. And yes, yes. And, and you, you can mask all of them. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So, and this will almost work because, surprise, mm -hmm. if you look in the diff view and we zoom in here, we'll get this anti-aliasing artifacts. Okay. And it turns out anti-aliasing is not deterministic. You can run multiple times the same thing on the same machine, the same browser, and it will, might yield you the different anti-aliasing. So how okay. can I fight this? And actually, if I go and look into the error, I will see that it says, hey, three pixels yes. difference. Yes. So this, this is when you, like, the web page is trying to draw a line or a curve, and it doesn't yeah. match the exact pixels. And so it's using the graphics card or some it's complicated some algorithm pixels. to determine the, the gray between the pixels, right? Yes. Yes, exactly. So, and this is the third feature mm -hmm. that helps you deal with this situation, which is called forgiving matching. Mm -hmm. This feature is actually part of the playwright test. So that's why we have it only for Node.js mm -hmm. right now. But maybe we will bring it eventually to other languages. Mm -hmm. So to use it, you now pass an option to this too much snapshot. And you say max diff pixels three. And you say, okay, okay. I am fine if there is a three pixel difference. Fine okay. by me. In in you know, in other techniques I know is people sometimes like they blur their screenshots and then try to match them against that. Do we, do we yeah. have that? Uh, so there is no blurring right now because okay. usually they are fighting one pixel difference. So mm. you okay. can easily cancel three pixels and you'll be fine. Also, we have a pretty clever algorithm. It tries to cancel all these anti-aliasing artifacts, but sometimes it's not perfect. In oh, yeah, we're, we're doing uh, like shifting, right? We shift one yes. or two pixels. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. There yeah, are white so, papers written about this stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so most of the time, the current algorithm is already pretty smart and will just work. And this is yeah, iffy. yeah. You know. So occasionally you might have a few pixel difference. Yeah. Okay. So this is cool, and this will yield me just one screenshot. Mm -hmm. Nice. Now there is a bonus content uh, for this release, mm -hmm. which is actually I am lazy writing these names for snapshots. I don't want to write them ever. Mm -hmm. So what I can do, since this version, I can just drop it. And the playwright test will generate Ooh. something nice for me uh, automatically. Yeah, my, okay. my JavaScript mind says that someone's going to convert that object to a string, and I'm going to get bracket object object bracket uh, dot PNG. No, you'll be fine. No, it's all <laughs> very uh, vigorously tested. Okay. So okay. So these were screenshot improvements. Uh, quick recap. We have... CSS animation disabled. And also, if you have not a CSS animation, but some kind of other animation, like set timeout based animation, uh, we have something in the works for you. Maybe we'll, we'll release it uh, shortly. Uh, second, mask elements. Uh, you can mask some multiple different elements. Uh, we have forgiven matching, and we have anonymous snapshots as a bonus. Cool. Cool. Moving on. Uh, look at this horse, huh? Yeah. Uh, test runner it's running. I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so first, I want to talk about parallelization. Mm -hmm. So quick recap: If there is one thing you want to remember about Playwright Test, is that it runs tests in parallel by default. Okay. Simple. Yeah. But what does it actually mean? And it actually means that different files are executed in parallel. Okay, so if I have tests in the same file, they're not in parallel. They're not in parallel, yeah. yeah. But you can actually make it run in parallel. And last time we presented this new test.describe.configure API that you can use to make either a whole file or some test suite to run in parallel. Yeah. But now we have this fully parallel mode. Ah, and it that's will what run I wanted. everything. Yes, everywhere. It will run yes. everything in parallel. I want everything always parallel. I don't want yes. to worry about what files are, you know. Uh... So, so for you, the way you do it, you can actually just have this fully parallel true in your configuration. Mm -hmm. And this is a way to opt in. Or you can actually engage this mode by a common line flag, like fully parallel. Are the uh, okay. inter internal playwright tests fully parallel? Uh, we are moving to this uh, beautiful world. Right? Yeah. We are not yet, but we are moving okay. to this world. Okay, I'm, I'm excited for that as well. Although I guess yes. the, uh, the the watchers will be less excited. <laughs> yeah. 
okay, there is one more thing on this slide. It's this grep inside the project, which is actually a new thing for this release as well. Now you can grep tests per project, and this is a very handy way to organize the smoke tests. Um, what is this grepping? This is the, oh. the file name of the test? Uh, test name, actually. Test name. Okay, so I put... So that at the, the at sign there is arbitrary. I, I yeah, you can put whatever. Okay, so so I can I could put hashtag smoke. I can just put smoke. I can put yes, you know, yes. hot dog, yeah. and yes, then I just put that in my test name. So it'd say like click the button hot dog, and then it would find. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So quick recap: we have a new fully parallel mode, and you can grab test per project. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Last part announcements and we have three things for this release first we now have a new docker image designated specifically for python users it's mm -hmm. microsoft com slash player slash python and do remember to pin the version number um, second uh, our main javascript image used to bundle python well it will no longer be the case and since mm -hmm. the following release right now you still have python but we'll drop it next release. So, so, so that means everybody gets a smaller Docker image, right? Because the Python yes. people won't get JavaScript and the JavaScript people won't get Python. Yes, exactly. Everyone gets smaller Docker image. Yeah. And last, uh, WebKit on Mac OS 10.15 will no longer be updated. And this is because upstream version of WebKit actually dropped support for Mac OS 10.15. Mm -hmm. So if you want to use the latest and greatest WebKit version, please mm -hmm. uh, update to the latest uh, Mac OS, oh, later Mac OS. And if you don't, you can use the old version forever. <laughs> yes, and you can actually just use old pirate version forever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Know. Okay. Summary. Uh, we have screenshot improvements, uh, handling animations, element masking, and uh, forgiving matching. Uh, we have test runner improvements, which is a fully parallel mode and project level grab. And uh, we have a bunch of announcements. Uh, the most important ones, I think, is that there's a new Python Docker image, and Python is no longer be bundled to their default JavaScript Docker image. So please switch over to a new Python Docker. So That's it. I, I had a yeah. question actually about the WebKit situation. Uh -huh. um, so if I'm running 10.15 and uh, I do update my playwright, uh, is it going to throw an error or is it Not going to yet. just use an old WebKit? So far, it will use the old WebKit. We drop it yet fully. Okay. We backport. We try to backport our changes for a while. Okay, that's good. So, so everything pretty much will still work. You just won't get new Safari yes. WebKit features, which is the same thing you're not getting on your laptop. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Okay. And Chrome will still be uh, Chromium will be up to date. And yes, uh, all Firefox will be up to date. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, if you like what we do, uh, please subscribe to our Twitter, follow us on Slack, and. Uh, yeah, give us a like on YouTube. And uh, last but not least, we have beautiful documentation and uh, everything is happening on GitHub. So if you have an issue or feature request, uh, please file it at our uh, github.com slash Microsoft slash Playwright. Mm -hmm. Angry rants. Angry rants, yes, uh, this as well. When compliments, Twitter. maybe people have compliments. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, who yeah. knows? Yes, it's the internet, but... <laughs> everything. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Joel. Bye. Bye.